In the previous video, we introduced k-means, a commonly used clustering algorithm. We showed how k-means aims at obtaining clusters by minimizing the variance of the points in each cluster. The training procedure that we introduced, however, is not unique to k-means. The procedure that we used and now want to introduce is the so-called expectation maximization algorithm, or short EM. To introduce the concept of the EM algorithm, let's consider a simple example. You can now see a one-dimensional dataset which contains two different groups, the colored and non-colored data points. Once again, obtaining clusters by just looking at our color is easy enough. Now, suppose that the data points were produced by two Gaussian distributions. We could now compute the mean and the standard deviation for the colored and the non-colored points and obtain two Gaussian curves. For each of the two groups, we can estimate the mean by taking the average of our observations. Once we have the estimate of our mean, we can now also compute the variance. Now this was an easy step of estimating our parameters, as we can obviously see the colors. But for now, suppose we cannot see the coloring. This means that we do not know which group each data point belongs to, and we simply just have a single set of non-colored data points. Luckily for us, the EM algorithm allows us to estimate two Gaussian distributions once again, even without having label information. To give you an overview of the EM algorithm, let's take a closer look at it. Assume that our data was drawn from two Gaussian distributions, once again. We now start with an initial estimate of the parameters. Since we don't have any information available, we just start by a random guess of the parameters. This might not be the best guess for the final model, but we will get there. Now, similarly to what we did for the k-means algorithm, we want to assign each data point to a group. Intuitively, data points that are closer to the colored Gaussian curve will have a higher probability of belonging to the colored group. For example, the data point on the very far right is quite far from the colored Gaussian and closer to the non-colored one. Therefore, we can assume that it most likely belongs to the non-colored Gaussian. So, in contrast to k-means, however, we don't assign a data point only to one single group or cluster. In our case now, we work with probabilities. You can imagine a slider going from non-colored to colored for each data point, meaning that some are slightly more on the purely colored side, where others are more of a mix of colored and non-colored. This step of assigning a probable cluster is called the expectation step. In a sense, we are asking ourselves where do we expect this data point to come from, and with what probability. Once the assignment step is done, we can now continue by recomputing our initial mean and standard deviation estimates. We do this similarly to how we did it in k-means. Look at our newly obtained coloring and compute a new mean and variance for each cluster. So if we want to update the colored cluster's parameters, as an example, we can use a weighted mean of all the points, where the data points that are more colored have a higher weight to the ones with less coloring. This step is called the maximization step. The name comes from the fact that we are looking for a set of parameters that best agrees with our cluster assignment. And as we can see in our example, our non-colored Gaussian does not agree very well with our data point assignment. So if we recompute the parameters, we can see that the Gaussian curve will now shift towards the right end. And now we do the same procedure of assigning, recomputing, assigning, recomputing, and so on. Or in other words, we keep iterating over the expectation and maximization step. Well, and that's really it. To conclude, we can see that the initial algorithm presented for k-means in our previous video is very similar to the idea of the expectation maximization algorithm. The EM algorithm, however, works with probabilities for the assignment of data points instead of just using a single cluster for each data point. This makes the EM algorithm more flexible for a number of different algorithms and thus also a very popular tool for clustering.